We should think about how we got to where you are, and you began that very wonderfully. Um, at the beginning of the 20th century, Emil Kreplin, who's sort of the founder of modern psychiatry, uh, divided the major psychiatric illnesses, the psychotic illnesses, into two groups, disorders of thought and cognition and disorders of mood. Disorders of cognition he called dementia precox, we now call schizophrenia, and we discussed that uh, a couple of programs ago. Uh, the disorders of mood, uh, we, we now realize are the depressions, and this is what we're gonna to discuss today. Uh, depressions come in two forms, unipolar depression and bipolar depression. Unipolar depression, as you indicated, was appreciated as early as Hippocrates in the fifth century BC. He thought that all diseases uh, of the body uh, were due to imbalance between the four humors. They didn't think of diseases as being organ specific, but body uh, specific. Blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. And mm -hmm. depression was an excess of black bile. In fact, melancholia is a Greek word for black bile. Um, the first really sort of good clinical description um, of depression came with a very famous 17th century psychoanalyst by the name of William Shakespeare, uh, your friend. <laughs> he has Hamlet say, yeah. how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seems to me all the uses of the world. And as you pointed out, the characteristic features of depression, which we're going to hear about, a sense of hopelessness, helplessness, low self-esteem, an unending poor mood or sadness, relentless day in and day out, associated with deep psychic pain. This is a very common disorder. Worldwide, about 5% of the population suffer from depression at one time or another. In the United States, it's the major disability in people between 15 and 45 years of age. Um, and it's also associated with sort of a loss of interest in what's going on in the world. It's really a very devastating disease. Um, bipolar depression it involves, in addition to the depressive episodes, episodes of mania. Uh, and these are almost the mirror image of depression, a feeling of you can accomplish anything, euphoria, uh, excessive talking, feeling that they're sexually very powerful and often they become sexually very active, no need for sleep, uh, and sometimes really engaging in risky behavior that gets them into all sorts of difficulties. Um, about 25% of people with unipolar depression also suffer from bipolar depression. Uh, fortunately, uh, we've been able to get various treatments for them. One of the most remarkable beginnings uh, in uh, obtaining treatment came from uh, Mary Bernheim. And I should uh, introduce this by saying, as we saw in schizophrenia, where a number of the drugs were introduced by accident, designed for other purposes, uh, this drug that Mary Bernheim actually discovered, uh, a monamine oxidase inhibitor, uh, was really initially used for tuberculosis. But what is remarkable about this, and you will enjoy this, this woman is an extraordinary pharmacologist. She trained in England in Cambridge, and she, as a graduate student in 1928, discovered this enzyme, this inhibitor of an enzyme, monamine oxidase inhibitor. She then moved to Duke and became the mainstay of the pharmacology department at Duke uh -huh. University and had really an extraordinary career. This drug was later picked up, uh, a particular uh, variant of it called ipronizid, uh, and used for tuberculosis, which was thought to be its target. And astute clinicians actually here in New York noticed that patients on this drug, on the tuberculosis ward, were jumping around. Most of the other tuberculosis patients are fatigued, somewhat depressed. These people were happy and comfortable. And somebody got the idea, let's try this in depression. And it turned out to be really quite effective. Almost as this was being tried, another group of drugs called tricyclic antidepressants came along, in which imipramine is a, a very good example. And soon it was realized that 
Both of these drugs have a common set of targets. They act in the modulatory neurons of the brain, the dopaminergic neurons, the serotonergic neurons, and adrenergic neurons. And this was not only an insight into the possible site of action, but it gave rise to a hypothesis about the nature of the disease. People began to think of depression as being a depletion of these modulatory transmitters, and these drugs were designed to sort of replenish the reservoir of modulatory transmitters. And after a while, the focus was to a large degree on serotonin, thinking that this was the most important uh, component. John Cadet was the first one to really introduce a treatment for uh, mania. Uh, a Greek physician had tried to treat patients with mania, with wafers that he thought contained lithium, and found that they were responsive to it. But this idea was dropped until Cadet came along, experimented with rodents, and found that when he injected this into rodents, they became more lethargic. And he wondered whether the manic patients wouldn't do better if they became a little bit, you know, lethargic, slowed down a little bit. And he uh, introduced lithium uh, in the 1970s, and it's turned out to be a very useful uh, treatment for uh, uh, depression. Uh, in addition, throughout all of this period, uh, people were using psychotherapy uh, to see whether or not it could be helpful in depression. Uh, and really several major advances have occurred in psychotherapy that we're going to hear about before uh, today. First of all, we now have evidence that psychotherapy is a biological treatment, in part through Helen's work. Um, we know that you can detect an abnormality in brain imaging in depressed patients. And if and only if they respond to psychotherapy, you have a reversal of that. And the reversal of that is very similar to what you see with selective serotonin uptake inhibitors, pharmacological treatments, number one. Number two, we've also learned how to combine pharmacological treatments and psychotherapy and how different forms of psychotherapy might be particularly effective. So we're in for a fantastic discussion of uh, depression and mania.